that we really know is having a very low cholesterol, that increases risk of a number of serious diseases. The idea that cholesterol causes heart disease was manufactured by industry, and, to, and particularly the pharmaceutical industry. And I repeat this daily, and if you read my books, you'll see there is no evidence. The evidence is that diabetes is what causes heart disease and arterial disease. Wow. And it just got missed because we don't diagnose diabetes sufficiently well. You have to measure insulin levels to understand diabetes. Measuring glucose ig ignores a whole bunch of population. So if you take a group with, with heart attack, you'll find that, and you test them properly, at least 80% of type 2 diabetes, but it's under-recognized. So and and sorry, and those, on those 80%, most will have normal cholesterol. So how can you say normal, normal cholesterol is causing heart disease? Yeah. When, but that's how strong the powerful the industry is to, to distort the message. Wow. I was interested uh, the, the issue of having to measure um, insulin rather than the blood sugar. I asked my GP to measure my insulin and she refused. Mm. That's it. What? That's she refused. She said there's no value in measuring the yep. insulin in your blood. And that's how bad the, the brainwashing is, you see. So everyone knows what their cholesterol is, but I can promise you, you can tell me what your cholesterol is if it's 2 or 10. I cannot help you. I cannot tell you whether that's a good or bad value for you. If you measure your fasting insulin as above 6, I can tell you, you are on the way to diabetes. You may take 10 years to get there, or 15 or 20, but you will get there in time. Okay. And so that's all you have to do. You have to know your fasting insulin. Fasting insulin? Fasting insulin values. And they must be below 6. Okay. And most people are running at 10 to 15. Well. And I was running at 30 wow. when I was a 28-year-old running marathons. Yeah and eating a high carbohydrate that I was five times normal. So I was just a walking disaster. I was going to get diabetes, but we didn't know what it meant. We thought, oh, you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, you're just producing lots of insulin. Well, that's good. It's not, it's the insulin that's killing us. So then let's talk about some of these other questions that are coming through. One of them is how does the blood group diet compare to banting? Yeah, there is no, there, there's no benefit for the blood group diet. There's no proof that it works. If you're O group, you're fine because then you'll put you on a high fat diet. But if you're A group, you'll put on a high carbohydrate diet. Now, if you're insulin resistant, which is the problem, and you're an A group, then you'll be put on a high carbohydrate diet and you will do very poorly. Mm. The, the genes are for insulin resistance and, and di risk of diabetes. Those are the genes you need to worry about. We don't know all of them, but we can tell whether you're insulin resistant by measuring your insulin, fasting insulin. That will give us most of the information we need. We don't need genes. We, we need to know we the fasting to know insulin, insulin level. Yeah, yeah, now, right. when you say fasting, how long does one need to fast before? Eight to twelve hours. Yeah, eight just to twelve hours. hours. So overnight, you overnight, know. So right. don't you have have supper at supper time and then not eat anything and go and have your yeah. insulin levels tested. And that's something that you can go and do at, at most uh, pathology that's labs. That's great. They'll measure it for you quite comfortably. Yeah. Okay. And based on that, then we need to we need a look. Earlier, you were chatting about the fact that you've worked it out that for thirty rand a day per person you can eat banting. Somebody's asking, what all does this include? Okay, so it includes eggs, pilchards, offal, particularly liver, okay. and then some vegetables and dairy. And then the expensive stuff in the banting diet are the nuts. Those are the, that's really what's really expensive. expensive. Yeah. So you can use peanuts, which aren't ideal, but they're pretty good for protein and they have a bit too much carbohydrate. But remember, we, we talk about the eat better South Africa, not the eat best or eat perfection. Yeah. We're coming from this dreadful diet to one that is, is a lot better, and that would be a much better diet. So that's, that's our goal. We can't make it perfect because that, that costs a lot of money. We, not everyone can feed on grass-fed animals. And yeah. That's and what becomes really expensive, although we should all be supporting the farmers who are raising their, their cattle that way. Not all, not everyone can afford it. Yeah, but yeah. can I say too, when you start eating that way, what surprises me is you eat a lot less. I used to sit down to this massive slab of steak with potatoes, and I could not eat that now. Honestly, I just mm. couldn't. My, I, I'm full. Mm. So you do it, end up eating a lot less. Not because you're being virtuous, but because you're not hungry. That's very interesting. Another question that's come through, it says, Good morning, Jonathan, Megan, Prof, Tim and Bernie. How, may, how many eggs, sorry, am I allowed to eat per <laughs> week? As um, and the answer is simple, as many as you choose to. Okay. And that can be six a day, ten a day, or it, as many as you like. The old idea that cholesterol is in the eggs is, you know, that is reductionism. Eggs yeah. are one of the most nutritious foods in the world. And we're finding, for example, that choline is very common in eggs. And 
Choline deficiency was only recognized like five or six years ago because of, we don't know all about nutrition, but, but I mean, you're eating a whole animal. That's an egg. <laughs> so surely <laughs> that's going to be healthier for you than a plant, which, which is not a... And the American Food and, and Drug Administration has removed cholesterol restriction from their dietary advice. So if they can do that, right, and that's a big thing for the FDA, right, they have removed the need to restrict cholesterol because... Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, but 85% of the cholesterol flowing around in your body is produced by your liver. Right? Only a very small percentage of the cholesterol you have. And, and cholesterol is really important. You can't live without cholesterol. Wow. Yeah, as one of my colleagues said, you know, if the liver was, if the liver's trying to kill you, so it's producing cholesterol. Well, it's even worse because the, <laughs> the brain, the brain pro- produces cholesterol. So it's also trying to kill you. Wow. And so we if, have to go if to we the doctor, believe that myth yeah, that exactly. cholesterol is a killer. Exactly right. Yeah. Wow. Megan? So, so I just want to clear something up. I've heard a lot of people say, um, you know, they eat eggs, but they take the yellow out. So is that a myth? Oh, that's terrible because it's the most nutrient dense part of the egg. So you've got to eat the yellow part. And don't you hate it when you go to a cafe and you see the half healthy breakfast, which is a white egg, uh, an egg white omelet. I want to cry <laughs> when I see that. <laughs> Seriously. Brilliant. Another question coming through on our WhatsApp line. Uh, it reads, good morning, BWF. Just a question for the doctors. I have PCOS. Will Banting work for me? And type 2 diabetes. Yeah, so the PCOS is also linked to insulin resistance. So, so the message we need to get out is 85% of chronic disease is linked to insulin resistance. And I can give you chapter and verse on all of those conditions. So PCOS, that's polycystic ovarian syndrome, is a known insulin resistance syndrome. And the treatment is a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet. Now, the biggest response we've had to this diet is women telling us our fertility is reversed and we've fallen pregnant. We've oh, struggled wow. for 10, 10 years. We've been barren. Yeah. We changed on this diet before pregnant within three months. And that, it is so common. Wow. It, is, it is the commonest report we get. So if wow. you have PCOS, you're very likely to be infertile. And the first thing to reverse that infertility is this diet. Okay. But you have to be strict because it, PCOS is the equivalent of diabetes. And this lady has both of those conditions. Wow. You know what really bugs me? In the last 40 years, the health of particularly Western populations has declined so markedly, and yet we behave as though this is normal, so we just pump drugs into it instead of saying, what's changed? Because mm. I guarantee you, my grand my grandfather was born in 1889. I know I don't look that yeah. old, Tim, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they ate lard, bacon, yeah. eggs, eggs, meat, and heart disease wasn't known. Yeah. Diabetes was almost unknown. Mm. Yeah. We should be asking what's changed. Yeah. So then let's talk about the things we should be eating and the things, and we, we've done so in a large way, but in terms of the clear things we should stay away from when we go to the supermarket. Because I know there are ladies that are now saying, oh my goodness, you guys on Breakfast with Friends have just ruined my week's <laughs> meal plan. And how am I supposed to do this? Like seriously? So what are the things we should stay away from when we go to the supermarket? Bernie, you know this quite well. You know, the best advice I ever had is the bad stuff in the supermarket is in the middle of the supermarket, in the aisles. Stick to the outside of the supermarket. The fruit and veg area, the dairy area, and the meat area, right? Eat that stuff. And don't think that because you're buying yogurt, you're eating healthy. (laughs) Because interestingly, anything with os at the end of it is a sugar. Lactose is a sugar. So milk is full of sugar. So when you drink that big cup of of cappuccino, you are consuming a lot of sugar. And some people add sugar to their cappuccino. Yeah, and that's without adding sugar to the cappuccino. So stick away with anything that has white carbohydrates in it. That's as as simple as that. And that leaves you so much to choose from. Okay. I'm glad we got onto the sugar issue because it's taken me the eight or nine years that I've been on this journey to realize sugar is the driver of obesity. Obesity is largely a sugar addiction. And you're not allowed to say that because then you're a quack if you said there's such a thing as a sugar addiction, but there is. It's one of the most addictive drugs known to humans. Yet we hand it out as if it's a, well, it's a sweet. Yeah. So if you really want to be healthy, you have to get off sugar and you have to get rid of the sweet taste. And that the tragedy is that our children are being addicted from the moment they are born they're exposed to sugar you know those little 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 pl- packets of pulp fruit that, that you see kids sucking on in their strollers um, I, I kind of I, I weep yeah. at that yeah 
Can I it's, say sugar was one of the hardest things for me exactly. um, uh, because it is as addictive as cocaine. Um, it took about two to three weeks of, of well, it was, it was harder than giving up smoking. I used to smoke heavily. Mm. But once I did, I, I now taste something sweet and it's like, yeah, I, I don't like it. And what I've noticed as well is that the fact that I put milk in my coffee and no sugar, I can taste the sweetness that is in the milk naturally. Oh, if I drink milk now, it's, it tastes like Coca-Cola to me. Yeah. yeah. Because it's that sweet. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a voice note with a question. Let's give that a quick listen. And uh, you're welcome to send through your messages on WhatsApp or Telegram. You're welcome to send through your messages on WhatsApp or Telegram to 061 Hi, this is for the professor. This is Valerie Gale. What is the difference between banting and ketogenic? Valerie, there's no real difference. Banting is a low carbohydrate diet. And when you go on a low carbohydrate diet, your liver starts to produce ketone bodies as a a way for your brain to use more fuel without using glucose. So that is the natural starvation response or low carbohydrate response. So the more extreme low carbohydrate banting diets will be more ketogenic. If you really want to develop very high ketone levels, i.e. extreme ketogenesis, then you have to get your carbohydrates to less than about 25 grams per day. Some people believe that a ketogenic diet is slightly more beneficial. In other words, if you can have lots of ketones circulating, that's really good. I think that is true if you're chronically diseased. If you have type 2 diabetes, it's better. The more ketones that you're producing in your liver, probably the outcome will be better for you. Can I ask you, Tim, what do you eat? I mean, how many grams of carbohydrates would you consume per day? Yeah, between 10 and 20. So that's yeah. very, very yeah. low. Yeah. Mm. And by, by the way, my type 2 diabetes is in remission. So if, the, wow. you know, there are a couple of us in Cape Town who are in remission, but yeah. The idea that type 2 diabetes is a complete chronic irreversible disease, not so. I've had it, I had it for probably eight years before I reversed it. Mm. And, and the crazy thing is, here is a nutter who runs marathons, right? <laughs> and he's lean, mean fighting machine. And yet, he had type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Most people don't know they have it. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, right. that's sad but true. Hey? And, it's, and normally when you do pick it up, because now you're starting to see the effects of it, you're exactly. almost too late. Yeah. So that's bad. Fortunately, you're quite right. It's so I couldn't. I'm not able to completely reverse. I still have to take medication, metformin, which is perfectly safe, okay. and that's considered to be in remission if you're still on metformin. Okay. But if I'd been on insulin, if I if I had not changed my life eight years ago, I'd be sitting here. I'd be 140 kilos, <coughs> and I probably would have lost a limb, and I probably would have had a stroke by now, and my memory would be going. Your that's the reality. Mm. Yeah. Tim, sure. can I ask you, why sure. was yours not reversible? Is it because you'd had it for so long that you lost some cells yeah. in the pancreas? Absolutely. And then I think you're, you're, you you become insulin resistant. The tissues don't respond too well to the insulin, but you, then you over-secrete insulin, which I was doing at the age of 28 already. Ooh. Wow. And my tissues were not responding, but then eventually the pancreas says that's enough and uh, it quits. Sure. And so then you, you've got too little insulin. Mm. Megan, you got a couple of yeah, questions. Yeah, there are so many questions coming up on our <laughs> on our WhatsApp line, and it's uh, yeah, it's, we're running out of time, unfortunately. But just want to throw this one in because I think it's really important. Um, actually, two things. So, number one, is it safe if you're pregnant to, to be on the banting diet? <laughs> and then the second thing, a lot of people are saying some of them are allergic to pork or fish. Some people they just don't eat pork or fish. Mm -hmm. Then are they um, rips, uh, um, alternatives yeah. to that? Well, meat and eggs, other meat and eggs would be that would be ideal. But to get to your other question, it's not safe. It's not safe to eat cereals and grains during pregnancy. That's the point. Yeah. You know, that, that's what you should be avoiding. This is the diet that you want to be eat because you want your glucose to be low all the time. That protects your, your fetus from high glucose and high insulin levels, which develops insulin resistance. Isn't this the subject of your tweet that, that yeah, got you exactly. in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same what thing. questions you asked yeah. me. Like, <laughs> but just let's make the point that yeah. the South African Dietary Guidelines say that a mother must eat meat, fish, eggs, dairy at least once a day or as often as possible. So wow. what I said was entirely compatible. Yeah. And the lady who was a chief prosecution witness, it was the lady who wrote the Dietary Guidelines. She has no clue what are her own dietary guidelines. Amazing. Yeah. And just for the record as well, you won that case. Yes, 13-0. Uh, 
Exactly. <laughs> it, went to, it went to appeal and they still lost it. Exactly. Know, so yeah. And I was declared innocent, not guilty, not, not, not guilty. Not, not guilty. Innocent. innocent. Was, there was nothing that I'd uh, done. Speak that about vindication. <laughs> hey? Thank you. I love that. And even with regard to that, is it true that what a mother eats also goes down through to the baby and can set that baby up the, for... Your grandmother determines the health of the, your, the next generation. It's Get what the town. mothers eat. They impact for two generations at least. We know that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mind yeah. just blown right there. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wrap it up now. What we're going to do, we are live on Facebook. We're going to keep the Facebook rolling and play you some music because this is valuable stuff. We don't want you to miss out. So go and check it out on our Facebook videos. Professor Tim Noakes, Bernie Diamond, thank you can so just, much for your time. Can I just say one thing? A website that you really want to go to is dietdoctor.com. Great education videos and a million brilliant recipes that yeah. I use all the time yeah. and my wife loves. Dietdoctor.com. Dietdoctor.com. And another movie to watch that will blow your mind is That Sugar Movie. Correct. So, so good. Or The Magic Pill if you're on Netflix. Okay, so on Netflix, go check it out. The Magic Pill or find that sugar movie, it'll really just blow your mind and help you so much. I'm gonna find this sure, this is so good. This is so good. The, the whole thing, and it was something my wife said when she was pregnant about that thing yeah. of the girl is born with all oh, the eggs. eggs. Yeah. You're born like that. Yeah. So, what Renell ate yeah. influences Zoe's children. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's just mind blowing. Yeah, mind blowing. Yeah, and the and the thing of you know rewarding. I mean, our oldest Zoe, she doesn't like sweets. So her teacher wants to you know give rewards if you behave in class, and she says, "Oh, you can choose whichever you want." And she's like, "No, thank you." It's like, what? Like, no, I don't like sweets. You know what I mean? Give her some bultong. Drevors, hey, loves yeah. it. Are <laughs> oh, Bilton and Drevors good? Yes, uh, hopefully they're from <coughs> grass fed animals. That, of course, are the key, but that's difficult to get. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. even if it's not grass fed, it's better than the alternatives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these healthy snack bars. I feel like well, I they're have terrible. Won, I feel like I've won the lottery. I honestly yeah. feel like I've become a millionaire yeah. by no longer having to starve myself and not carrying around 25 kilograms. Okay. You know how they say, if it's too good to be true, it probably is? Yeah. Well, this is the one exception. <laughs> right. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing, sure. So again, that website is dietdoctor.com. And by the way, I have no financial yeah. interest in Diet Doctor. Um, I do yeah. subscribe for $9 US a month, I think it is, to unlock all the, the recipes and stuff, but that's okay. it. And. Um, Best, yeah. best website. Yeah. And if people want to connect with you, Professor Tim Noakes, what's the best way for them to do so? Yeah, through the Noakes Foundation. They okay. The Noakesfoundation.org. That's, yeah, that's it. Correct, yeah. The Noakesfoundation.org. It's been such an honor. And I'm so glad you're sticking around, Bernie. Bernie's going to be sticking around to share his story of hope part two. I charge extra for sticking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Love